or left. Um, but by I guess by convention we have x and y on the left mm -hmm. and da on the right. And you just kind of have to get a feel for how they're they feel in the hand. Like I can tell that if I have the right and the left, like it doesn't feel right. Like I'm yeah. smushing my hand in the small part. Mm -hmm. But if I flop these around and have the left control in the left hand, in the right in the right hand, like notice how kind of the, the main part of your palm yeah. or your hand yeah. goes through the big open part. Yeah. The, and it wraps around. And I just know by default that or by training that my index finger goes on this top button. So I know that this feels natural and my middle finger hits this button. So you kind of wrap your, your three fingers around the center stick and and your index fingers on the top triggers, and then your thumbs rest on top here. So again, if I have them reversed, it's not gonna get I can't even fit. Yeah. This doesn't feel right. You know, I'm getting hit here, and my whole hand is holding down this button. And this doesn't even like this doesn't even feel right with my thumb. Right. So these are the kind of cues you, you pick up. You can also put stickers, put like an NL and an R. And the newer ones, they've learned how they've, they've engraved them. Okay. So. But you're getting a refurbished one, so they'll look like this. Um, later on, during the the lessons, I guess as you go into development, you'll learn like how to code for each button. Like some of them are, are just press buttons. Some of them are um, they have float values attributed to them, like how far are you pushing this to the left or right. up. Where this just these buttons just know if they're being pressed or not. Um, or if a, like a finger is just being held on them. Um, these are system buttons. So this will happen a lot. You'll be in VR and you're just just getting comfortable with the hand controllers and you're kind of messing around and you'll hit this button which will pop you out of the app and you'll be in like their home page, their, their library system. And you're like, what's going on? Where am I? It kind of looks like a living room and what have you. But there's like there's like windows sitting in front of you, like yeah. these are your pieces of software that you can use. Um, and so for, especially for younger people, it's it's very confusing. And yeah. I think it's still part of the experience, the app, <laughs> but it's not. Um, so just be aware that this button and this button are, you know, as developers, you, you don't even have access to these in Unity, Unreal, or what have you. But you'll hit these a lot. You'll get used to how to place your thumb for either using these type of directional pads or these buttons. So you do like a lot of grabbing with the, your index and your middle finger to grab stuff. And then you might, to execute stuff, like you'll be using buttons. Um, there's um, the sensors. So you were talking about the sensors earlier. Mm -hmm. So you can't see them, but there's, um, the trackers are able to pick up little markings, or I forget what, what the technology that's used in these rings, but these are actually the areas that the sensors are reading. Okay. So when you're moving your arms around in physical space, you know, it'll be replicated in the virtual space because the sensors are reading this. Is there a max distance for the sensors? Yeah, it's the suggested play area for this setup yeah. for a desktop riff is like 10 by 10. Okay. Usually it's like eight by eight. Um, and then the only thing left to say with these is, you'll see there's like little markings. Actually, there's two things left. One is you slide these out. Here's the batteries. So you guys are gonna have to have a lot of double A batteries in your classroom. You'll, you'll tear through them. But that's how that works. So it opens up. And there's the, the lanyards are these like safety rings. Yep. Is it one sensor per pair or is that both nope. sensors? So this, these two sensors are purposely supposed to be pushed out, I think no more than six feet, okay. like four to six feet apart from each other and angled in toward the center of the, the play area. Okay. And then they're both used to calibrate in 3D space where your hands and head is. So basically each workstation will have two of these sensors. Mm -hmm. the, both of those and the headset. Yes, you'll probably have one monitor. Yeah, I was going to say, I think we probably but only are having one, one monitor. We're pretty low tech with our layout. Okay. Just putting the sensors around the table, putting the headset. You know, there's more elaborate ways to do it. And there's like 
mannequin heads that you can like leave the headset on, you know, and there's like ways to store the equipment that helps with the, the cable management. You see that there, if you look behind, like all the wires going into the computer, it can get messy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so just instruct them to put what they call a lanyard around the wrist because you swing it. Swing it. Um, yeah, no, but if I didn't have that, I would throw it too. Um, so um, I guess I'm gonna leave these later on. I have you mess with the controllers to get used to it. Um, so the headset also has whatever the technology is, if it's infrared lights or markings or I, I forgot what they're using, but there's a bunch of tracking areas on the headset too that the tracking sensors are picking up. Okay. So and the sensors are not just used for the rifters or drifters? What are they called? Mm -hmm. The rest of the controllers. Oh, the, these control I don't know if there's a real a name for them. They're just hand controllers. So for the, the sensors are used for the headset and the hand controller. Yeah, it's the same same tracking system. Whatever's going on here mm -hmm. is the same thing going on, on there. there. And so now within the play space, it, it can read where the head is at. It can tell how it's rotated. And all that information gets fed into your, your VR app. And that's it for this. So then, yeah, right, so you have the two sensors. You see that there's a white light on top, and so they're live. They're, they're connected in. They both, um, the sensors have just one USB connection. For the headset, this cable opens up into two, a USB and a HDMI okay. that goes into the graphics card. But you should have, I don't know, your tech support setting this up. But you're gonna to have to troubleshoot, you know, these things are gonna get unplugged during class time. You're gonna to have to know how to reset them. Yeah. So speaking of that, if you have everything plugged in, your next step, and normally you just place your sensors out and we're not ready to calibrate them yet. But if you install this Oculus app, which if let's see if I have this one. I'll just say like Oculus download. So, so here you just download the software. So now the, the next gen is this Rift S, but this will work for the Rift as well. And so these are their other hardware platform. I'll have you mess around with the Quest and the Go. But for now, if you download it, you'll get something like this. So this is the Oculus app. So the home page is kind of showing you all the hot new software. The store is where you can buy software. Um, hopefully you'll have some type of student or school account because you're gonna have to download software for the students to play around with. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, we have some art programs like Quill and then you know simulators, but these are all games mostly. Um, so then we have the store, we have some search command up here. The library shows you what you have access to, what you can download, what you already purchased. So if you mess around here, so we have like a like a gym, like a boxing app. Here's like a looking through the universe, flying through the planets, meditation. These are a bunch of games. I've done the roller coaster one. You don't have to update. I mean, you don't have to like upload your game to the app store in order no. for you to play, right? No, no, no. So when you're done with Unity, you you either build for PC, mm -hmm. um, which is the Rift, or later on, if you're if you guys have access to the Go's or the Quest, you you build to Android. There's a whole process to use an Android Studio. There's like a command prompt, okay. command line, and you um, it's all like we, we'll get we'll create like a little guide, pretty straightforward. And then you, you install the app onto the the Go or the Quest, which is just an Android device, very similar to your phone. Yeah. And you just, it'll appear in the little store when you put on that headset. It'll appear on it's like an icon or something. Like yeah. Okay. I'll show you what mine looks like. It's like unsupported software because it's, you're just installing, it's not through the store. Yeah. Um, but there's a big one, devices, what's currently plugged in. So this is showing that I have the Oculus Rift and Touch plugged in and we have another it's like another system, another 
set of hardware was well, I one time plugged in. But it looks like this one's active. Looks like I'm getting a little warning. Looks like their firmware is out of date. USB driver update recommended. But I, I'm sure everything will still run fine, but you can know when to update your own yeah. firmware on your hardware. Um, it's either driver update or it looks like we're not plugged in. Detect the to USB 3.0. But we see that we have two sensors plugged in. We have a left and a right. It shows you the battery on each. So it looks like my right controller is getting kind of low <laughs> at some point. Might want to swap it out. Um, but let me go through the rest of these tabs before I go through setting this up. So yeah, I'm, I'm logged in as someone for me, it's myself. Um, but hopefully you've got a school account at this point. If you need to log out, it's kind of weird. It's, you have to go to friends and then you can sign out and log in as someone else. So it's underneath friends, like, cause it's a Facebook um, okay. kind of app. So the platform is used kind of like Facebook. Um, notifications of what you installed or what needs to be updated. We got like a little help center. And I think back under devices, if I just wanted to run. So you have some settings like how high is your microphone, your headphones. But here, down here. So if you, if at any point you need to reset up something, you can go to specific calibrations but we're gonna go just run through the whole calibration so if you just wanted to reset the sensors or reset your floor position or the guardian system which is this like fence that if somebody's in VR and you're walking too far over it'll, like a fence will show up in VR oh, okay. saying yeah. warning you're getting too close yeah. so for example if this table is too close you don't want them getting into it the fence would be like here and you like, don't you know, stuff. so it depends on your classroom, what type of stuff you have laid out. But in general, there's like one workstation. You might have two students per workstation. You yeah. know, paired programming is very common. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you have a workstation, Unity, Oculus hardware, and they're they're testing, they're clicking play in the, the Unity editor. They're putting on the headset while they're sitting and they're mm -hmm. testing. But then they might get to the point where they really want to test it out and they push the chair off. And they're in their play area. Yeah. Is there a way to extend that cable? Because I don't think it goes yeah. you know, yeah. that far. So for a, like a ten by ten play area, it's it's pretty it's good enough. Okay. So the recommended space is ten by ten or eight by eight for um, workstation. We we sit to around six by six or eight by eight just because it were workstation based. But I think you can go up to ten by ten or maybe even twelve by twelve. It it says when you're doing it. Which I'll walk you through in a moment. Okay. Um, but in a class, you can see kind of as the workstations are lined up next to each other, you know that, that there is an overlap. Yeah. So what we might do is have okay, each workstation just has one VR headset. The students, the teams of students working on stuff, they don't all need to be in VR at once. Right. Yeah. So then we can say okay, only every other might have a, a VR station that we we can like take the floor out say this, you know, be careful, don't put chairs and desks in this area, this is our summer work. So for us, it would be taped out like around here. Okay. I think generally what's going to happen with my classroom is going to be um, half of the class is going to be the workstations, kind of like this, back to back, and then the other side I'm going to be like this, space it out so that they'll have room. Sure. And these can also be temporary. If you train the students, they can build out their own space every day, every week. So you can play it by your how you build out the, the VR spaces. But um, I think if I go into device support, yeah, this will go through the whole calibration process. So you have to do this when you first start. And the real trick to it is, um, the sensors ever get messed up, someone knocks it over, you have to kind of recalibrate the sensors again, which is a subsection of this whole process. But at first it says, okay, what do you have connected? 
in the very least, you need your headset and your two sensors connected. So I have green checked that everything's good. I'm good to go. But if I unplug something, it'll then have a red X. Yeah, I won't be able to proceed. Okay. I have a red X and saying you don't have the hardware you need. You have to connect it in. And so here it's communicating to sensors through USB. And so it's just doing its little protocol for communication. And the blue line is filling up. So you come in close to if you need to look at. So now I got green checks, like my two sensors work well. There's no breaks in the line. There's no break in the, the USB port. We're good. And so now this is saying how to set up your sensors. So um, the glossy with the dot is the front of it. This needs to be pointing out toward the user. And that's about it there. Now it needs to know a floor position. So basically, I just take the average height. So maybe 5'10", 5'11", or whatever. But each student, if they know their height, they just enter this in. And again, once we've gone through the calibration, you can go back to subsections of the calibration. So even if everything is great, but one student was six foot using it, and the next week another student who's five foot two use it, they just need to go into floor position and just change so it. So they'll have access to, that access to this? I hope, I think so. Um, I don't know your IT you know, rules, but it, this is just a piece of software sitting on a computer. Yeah. Okay. And I don't think they'll need admin rights to mess around with it. And it, in fact, you shouldn't, like they should have full admin rights to yeah. Unity, editor to this oculus app yeah we're working on that <laughs> and so that they can set themselves up you know you don't want to be um I mean, holding their hand every every day yeah, yeah, yeah. and if they're do, and if they're doing a tech class anyway this is part of yeah being technical as well so anyway enter in somebody's so for me i, I just put in like six foot and you could put it in metric if you wanted to and all this stuff is in the software anyways in, in metric units, so it might be good to get the students used to meters and centimeters mm -hmm. and kilograms um, because all the little physics engines are in the metric system. So this thing clear everything out. Stand up, place your sensors. They must be between three and six feet apart, and then rotate them toward the center of the play area. So to show that's one thing I haven't done. I'll just rotate him on the Rotate this sensor in. And you can move them up and down. If if some people like put them up on shelves and it's angled down. Mm -hmm. But as long as they're kind of angled toward the center. So maybe just to ease up a little bit. Yeah, I think we're good. Um set up the yeah, and the next steps we're going to set up tracking so this we're going to take a controller anyone doesn't matter remember how to make it feel right in your hand so that's the right one what it's saying is go to the center of your play area and just hold down a trigger so i'll say like this is kind of the center of my area i'm just going to hold it down notice that the wheel is filling up there we go so we passed that now it's saying, okay, rotate your sensor, or rotate your controller so that the sensors are kind of positioned Center. to the computer. So right there for me. All right, so now it's saying, this will happen a lot. So this is saying that they're, move them farther apart and try again. They're too close. So this is kind of, that's interesting. They're getting a little too close, but my table space is kind of small. So I'll just take this one and pop them over here for now. And then we'll retry. That's, we must be right at the three foot marker because before it, it's been fine. So again, I'm just going to Rotate my hand controller, that's kind of where they are, that's good. All right, so now I'm having issues with rotation. So this is saying, 
Um, both of them need to be rotated out. This one needs to be rotated out further than this one. So it kind of shows you the yeah. clockwise, counterclockwise, and how far, how much, how much of a rotation. So we're saying, okay, this one, maybe like that, based on these diagrams. I've just done this a few times, so I kind of yeah. got a feel for the system. And what you'll, so this kind of visual information, little graphics tries to guide you on it. So I'm gonna center them, up, center them up again, and then. So this area, so we have a green check mark, sensors are set up correctly. And here you can see we have like an overlap. So this is the sweet spot. You really want the person to be in the area that's overlapped by both sensors. And now we're gonna set up the guardian. Again, it's this invisible fence that pops up. So take a controller, I'm just holding down the index finger. You see I'm drawing this blue line. And I'm keeping the hand controller always in the view of the sensors. Like I'm not turning around and doing this, otherwise my body would block the sensors. And notice I'm kind of getting out of the sweet spot there. Like if I kept pushing forward, so this controller right now is, is making a, a pulsing feeling to my hand. So I know it's being tracked by the sensors. And if I push it beyond, it's lost it. It's not beep, it's not pulsating on my hand and we've lost the visual tracking information responding back to the user. So if I pull back and just finish my sweep and notice how when you start leaving that sweet spot, that overlap, of the two sensors is where you start getting funky results. So that's why it's really important to maximize that double spread. So here it's saying play area is optimal. So most of the time I don't get optimal settings, I get moderate because it's just the space constraints I have in the lab. Um, but here it says, usually it says some recommended sizes to your play area, but um, I got a nice big rectangle. So it's almost a square. It's nice, yeah. So I don't know how big, but it says it's optimal. I'm, get, I'm guess I'm getting close to 10 by 10. I think it's more like 8 by 8. But for ref, it says it's perfect. So we're good. Now it gives you some warnings like, um, you know, just be careful, don't move your sensors anymore. If you do, you kind of have to go through that process again. And then it's good, it kicks you back to the main Oculus app. So we're good, we're all set up. And as far as just using Oculus as a, a platform, we are good, so I'm just gonna go Not all of these are installed. So normally the first contact, let me just install that one. That's like the standard for like this, it's like an 80s retro thing. And this little robot comes out and it teaches you how to use the different parts of the hand controllers and how to look around. And everyone loves it and kids love it. You mess around with this control, this robot and he gives you little toys to play with. And so some things first for users that might be, they put on the headset and they're just like, whoa, it's so weird because the graphics takes over your, your visual your, your visual senses. And, but then the first thing is to look around, like, oh, this isn't just like a monitor-based situation where you can look around and there's content all around you. And then, it's, then the next thing usually people do is wake, oh, wait, because I have virtual hands. Then they'll start just spamming on the controls to see the hands doing this. But the problem is, that's when they'll usually hit that button and they'll pop out. And then, and then they'll just be out of it, just confused. But some of them will get used to seeing, oh, there's, there'll be a big window that says, oh, you were in this app, but it's paused and you can either resume or quit. So it's important right away to get your students trained that you will hit this accidentally, you'll pop out, don't worry jump back in and even if you kill the app you quit it just you're, you're going to be in the oculus room right you'll be able to click your app again 
know when they're doing when they're in the VR world, right? You know how you just said sometimes they'll turn around. If they turn around, they're in something when they're like, okay, I gotta turn around and see what's around me. Is that gonna throw off the sensor? Because if your back is to exact. Right. So, not on the heads. The head's pretty good. Yeah, I'm talking more and about In fact, the, the head's good because I think this you know, is also tracked. But the problem is, is if you turn around, your hand will, will disappear. They'll start getting this weird glitchiness, poppiness, and then they'll just kind of disappear. So if, in, they turn around, if you, you, if you just pull your hands out, or okay. just keep turning. So normally that's, yeah, that's something to think about. And as a developer now, maybe you want to build VR experiences where most of the fun is always on one the side, side yeah. of the world. So there's these VR UX design docs will send you where it's like the, the extent of your visual range is like the active area, like the, the, all, the whole point of the app is kind of there. And then from here to here kind of is exploration zone, like additional supplementary content might be over here and here. For those who wish to explore more, then this zone behind you is normally termed like the curiosity zone. Like you can have some other non-essential interactives. Just something to look not, at. It's not the center point of the app. But it'll keep somebody engaged if they're fully turning around and then try to get their attention back toward the front. There's a way to program so that like, <laughs> the entire like environment kind of rotates so that you're always facing that one direction you could um kind but like not but the problem is if i'm in vr and you're rotating the whole world you're going to make the person sick because it's like this whole room spinning is always spinning if i'm always looking yeah. this way this whole room is like on a yeah. big turntable yeah. loop it's going to make the person sick it's kind of like the first person but they'll have like little helpers yeah. like if i keep looking over here there might be a little thing that, that says come back Oh, yeah, a little graphic card thing there. But anyway, I'll just pull you back over here. This is all the software. You see, like, some are, have yet to be installed, and one that is installed says start, I can use it. Mm -hmm. and these little dots give you some options, like if you want to uninstall it or whatever. So, one by one, I'll, I'll have you do first contact. So, if you were to walk somebody through VR for the first time, just know that if, if I put, I'm going to put you in VR first. But if I put you in, you'll see something similar to this, but in VR, so that you can pick your own apps you want to play. Okay. But since you're new, I'm just going to start, start the app. I'm going to pop you in. Okay. But later on, as you're more comfortable, you will choose to like use the Oculus button to pop out, just so that you're aware of what the, the home screen looks like. Okay. So then you get comfortable. You get to view it. He's like, and we'll swap it to you. I've, so, had the, I've had the VR um, headset when it first came out, and it got connected to my Note phone. So some of the things that you're saying about the library, I kind of Okay, so that was something that. like Gear VR. Like, sure, we'll go over the other yeah. platforms too. But right now we're just doing desktop-based okay. VR. So um, I'll do the full, hold on one second. Why, how long has this been running? Yeah. 20 years. You guys are going to have a lot of questions. Yeah. I'm just trying to answer um, them. In the beginning, we had mentioned that when the students are in the VR environment, towards so the end, when they're in the group, the we can how is it that a teacher can monitor? So you're going to see, at least in this case, on desktop, there'll be uh, the app will be running. You'll be able to see what they're doing and see. Okay, so it was something where I would actually walk around and go to each desktop and see. Yeah. Okay. Then later on, when you're dealing with mobile or standalone, um, I I do some data analytics. I record to see what they're doing. Yeah. But, you so you might that. do stuff like that, or down the road, like the teacher might have an iPad, and there'll be like you know, you know those like security cameras. Yeah. There's all those different. Yeah. So you might have a view into each student, see what they're doing, and if you want to see one student more, you might click on one. They'll go full screen. You can guide them or help them or like play stuff in VR to help them. But, Right. Do you That's have more that here? No. Okay. I'm just saying this is probably where yeah. it's going. Uh, the, the technology will yeah. But these are pretty cheap. They're universal virtuality sanitary masks. Again, if people are doing demos and stuff, or if you know they're going to get sweaty, you, you probably want them to use this. Yeah. But if one student gets like one headset for the semester, 
than just clean it before and after. Yeah, I've been teaching two classes at least. So I'll instruct you how to put it on. Sure. So you're going to put this like that and then around here on the two ears and take a little face mask. So, to start with, you know, you want your students to be to look Smiles. like this. Also, you might, um, for younger kids, you, you might want to tell them to go to the bathroom and wash up first because some of them might not be washing up. Yeah. And I don't have to worry about it as much, although college kids are dirty. But there, I hear instances that you, some of your kids are passing pink eye and stuff. And yeah. So. Nice little sanitizer. See you. You're gonna want maybe. I don't have any of those wipes, but yeah, yeah, hand sanitizers or wipes yeah. or. The wipes go, are wipes. Tell them to wipe their face down. Baby wipes. I don't know. Yeah. You do your best. Yeah. I got baby wipes at home. So anyway, this is the sanitation mask, and then since I've set up everything fine with you, I say that the center the point is about here. You're going to angle toward the computer, and as I told you, I'll, I'll put you, when I put this headset on you, I'll move your hands, and I'll tell you where these are. Okay. Do these first, and then the top one left. And last but not least, this moves the two lenses back and forth. Everybody has a different distance between their pupils. Right. And so just move this. Can I see that? Oh, the, the lens moves back and forth? Always. So what um, makes for clear vision? Can I, can you can move this? Would you like to do it? You meant that's raining? So you're pretty good. So I, I might tell people, I might grab people's hands and take their, say, this is the side strap here. Mm -hmm. And then I might move their hand and say, this is the top strap. Or I might do it for them if they're getting really lost. Yeah. And then, yeah, last but not least, these are the these are movable, so if you need, if someone's talking to you, oh, maybe I'll do it this way. This camera's over here. Yeah. So if they need to hear stuff from you, you have to train them how to move the, the headphones off their ear. Okay. Is there a focus? No. Uh, nope. So that was a good, uh, I did forget to mention uh, eyeglasses. So most of these, there is enough room for eyeglasses. Um, and the newer versions have definitely a lot more room for people's eyeglasses, but there is no focus for, um, for, for uh, that type of lens. The only diff thing you could do is the distance between the eyes. Yeah. So eventually the, these get, the facial wipes get annoying to deal with. So like, that's why I like to give one student a headset per semester. Like this is yours, get used to cleaning it because these, Sanitation mask and are cumbersome. I'm just gonna move this because this is wrapped around your ear. So I guess you're seeing something. You're seeing like the yeah, yeah, It's a health and safety wire. Okay, and I see a little uh, dial there. Just to okay, just press any button to turn off. So if you hold out your your right hand, slide this on. Usually for the first time for people, they really don't know how to place their hand. Mm -hmm. So index finger, really important. Middle finger, kind of your three fingers wrap here. Right. But they're kind of loose because you don't want to always hold that down. Mm -hmm. And your thumb kind of sits. And then I'll do the other hand. Same thing. Index, middle finger, rest of your hand, your thumb. So I'm going to click, so myself as a student, or a teacher, and this is the student, I'll start the experience for him, bless you. And by doing that, I'm just clicking on this app. In this case, it's Oculus First Contact. So you write questions of what the teacher would see. This is what you would see here. So I can tell that he's in the app correctly. He's okay. seeing something. I can tell he's looking at his hands. 
I can tell he sees the environment. I don't know. I don't know about the sound. I'm guessing that he's hearing. I good can sound. hear something. Yeah. Yeah. He can hear good sound. He can hear me. And so I just realized I was standing in front of the sensor as I was helping him and clicking on the computer. So I got to move off. So one thing I, I will say right off the bat is I can I notice that you're. I've done this app quite a bit. I know that he's, he should be able to reach comfortably and touch this top of this robot's head. So, but I can tell that his hand is not touching that. So he's not in the center. He's a, he's a little farther back from the center. So no, no, don't move. This lets me talk about if you hold down the Oculus button. Did not pop in. Did you pop out? Yeah, I see. Well, it, it has the uh, title screen. It just says quit app or reset view. So go to reset view and press the A button. Press the yeah, button. Reset view, look forward and press the button to reset your view. Yep. And orientation and display. Okay. So, so click forward. that and go back into the experience. Oh, okay. It's closer now. Yeah. So he was just able to close. This, this little robot is like the, the center hero, the the narrator this is the main interactive you touch and talk to. So I realized he was too far off, so that allowed me to show him the Oculus button, which let him jump out of the experience. You'll see it next. And I, I had that can. This one? Yeah. yeah. You gotta throw it again. So uh, by recentering, he was closer to the robot and he was able to start the experience off. And now you know what it's like to leave the app and how to go back in. So if I move forward, you're going to be like too close to your interactives. Yeah. In this case, this type of VR experience, the interactives are kind of all waist height around you, around the 180 degrees in front of you, and you should be able to reach everything comfortably. And that's when you know you're in the center of the experience. But not all of them are like this. There's more free range, or it really depends on how the, the your experience is so kind of a nice tutorial and then yeah 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 it's fun everyone loves it and you get to learn how to be exploratory and curious and play with oh. things around you and how to use the main hand interactives Dennis is loving this. so normally for your students um, it's like a whole day thing just to get them used to VR and get it all out of their system and, and goof around. So you might pick a, cherry pick a few apps that you really like. And then maybe the lesson plan is, is make sure that you spend 15 minutes in each and write a little, a little paper on what you thought about it or something. Because as great as this experience is and in introducing a person to VR, it's only one way that a VR experience can be designed. Oh, so you put the cartridge back. Yeah, I put it back. You want to play with the, with the objects first. So keep spinning that really fast. Oh, you threw it. Away. You throw it away. You can break them. You can break it if you spin it really fast. Not that one. Yeah, the yeah. Yeah. Keep spinning really fast. Keep going. Huh. Maybe they don't did. You can break it, and the robot gets like a little freaked out or starts laughing. You gotta release it. Release the tab. There you go. Stay here all day. <laughs> yeah, so you can imagine your the students, students will have a blast yeah. doing this. The students are not gonna wanna go. No. But so the hardest part right now is once you can get them functioning in VR as a user is how to get them to start thinking. Because they're just gonna go into play mode. They're not gonna be thinking as a designer or developer. Mm -hmm. Sick. So 
So unless I'm clicking a button, like nothing's really being grabbed or touched, right? Yeah, that's the way this one was set up. So not all these objects are grabbable. 